Hi everyone, this is Grant Ellis, aka PFC Amy Grant, formerly of Outpost Zero, but now just straight part of uh, the WWPD network. And it's that time of the month again where a package comes from a pre order. It's going to be the next adventure pack of the Angmar Awakened cycle uh, for the Lord of the Rings Living Card game made by Fantasy Flight Games. Really excited, it's been a long work week, and yesterday was actually when I got the notification that it was shipping. So let's jump into the box, see what cards we have in this set. A lot have been spoiled so far, um, most in non-English language, but uh, the pack is available now. A number of people have bought it. I'm curious to see how they expand upon the Noldor trait, the Dunedain trait, and um, rumor has it that they're going to expand the already expansive Dwarf trait. So let's jump in to the cards, see what we have. Here it is, the uh, Across the Entenmore's Adventure Pack and the new shiny uh, sealed plastic uh, packaging that the adventure packs are coming into. They're kind of growing on me, but not really. I miss the old cardboard packs. We look on the back and bring it into focus. As we look on the back, um, it explains the number of cards that are here in this adventure pack. You have the option of scanning the QR code. Uh, not really any uh, flavor text is given to us, but I do like the art. It looks like an elf, probably a Noldor. Uh, high elf up top. Um, so let's jump into the pack, see what we got. So as we open uh, the box and we come to the rules, it explains again what the Valor keyword is. It gives the adventure in a, a difficulty rating of four. It continues the story after the second adventure pack of the cycle, Escape from Mount Graham. It looks like we're going to see the battle keyword. There's going to be some objective locations, a new safe keyword. Um, safe is a new keyword uh, in the Across the Entenmore scenario, representing havens in which players can take refuge from the harsh weather and vicious trolls of the Entenmores. That's great. If you haven't played the Lost Realm cycle yet, or any of the other adventures, weather is a constant menace that is beating down heroes, allies, left and right. There have been deaths based on harsh rain, cold hills, whatever you uh, can think of. Just it's it's not good, and everyone should really wear uh, protective clothing when they're going out into the elements. But it looks like they've established safe zones. Flipping on the back, there's a do not read section. Uh, there is explanations about an objective ally, uh, a story section, um, plenty of artwork. Um, most of this is uh, the basic features that we'd see in an adventure pack. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the cards themselves. The first player card of the adventure pack is a hero card, a tactics dwarf named Dory from Thorn's Company. Uh, he has pretty cool artwork. He's getting battle ready. And I'm wondering if we're going to see a influx of Tactics Dwarfs and Tactics Dwarf items. I'm not too sure. The Dwarf trait is already highly expanded, but it could always use a little more. As we look at Dory, he has a threat cost of 10. His willpower is 1. His attack is 2. And his defense is 3. Dory also happens to have uh, the sentinel keyword in the response. After another hero is declared as defender, exhaust Dory to add his defense to the defending hero's defense for this attack. It's an underwhelming ability. However, it may have use. Perhaps we're going to see stronger enemies. We're going to see tougher bosses. And we're going to need to find ways to engineer a defense boost. We're not going to compare... Uh, within this video, since it's an unboxing video, how this defense buff and tanking buff compares to other cards that provide the same uh, sort of buffs. Um, he starts with two defense, and adding two defense is nothing to, you know, cry about. However, that leaves Dory unable to quest or attack, and he has to be ready to do it. It's also kind of strange that he'd have the Sentinel keyword, yet his ability requires him to exhaust in order to take advantage of it. Let's move on to the next player card. The next player card is a one-cost leadership attachment 
called Ranger Provisions. It attaches to a location, and you can only have one per location. And after the attached location is explored, the first player, or rather, the player with the first player token, adds one resource to each of his hero's resource pools. So it's a nice way to accelerate resources, which you already have a lot of within the leadership sphere. Um, some of the better uh, acceleration items, such as Steward of Gondor, might be considered non-thematic for your deck. And also, it's good to look at clever ways where you can get more resources for when you need them. And possibly you can time your window, so the first player uh, perhaps is a deck that needs some splashing from a different sphere in order to accelerate their resources. They might not have access to a lot of resource acceleration uh, out of the box. And so they look to the player who plays this card in order to help them out. And a lot of decks have great location clearing abilities. So it's a useful card, particularly in a deck that has lots of location clearing. Or rather, it combos well with a deck that has lots of location clearing. The next card is a one-cost leadership event. It's a signal card, and it is called Dunedin Message. It enables you to take the action where you can search your deck for a side quest and add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. Some of the side quests are extremely powerful and useful. Um, I've seen some where you are able to search your deck for a card uh, you specifically want or need. Um, I've seen some where you may have high threat reduction, no doubt in this adventure pack we will probably see yet another side quest. So this is a good way to tutor the side quests uh, out of your deck and into your hand. The next card is a three cost tactics ally called Longbeard Sentry. He belongs to the Tactic Sphere. He has zero willpower, one attack, two defense, three hit points, and is, he has both the Dwarf and the Warrior trait. And his action is discard two cards from the top of your deck to give Longbeard, Sentry, Sentinel, and plus one defense until the end of the phase. Limit once per phase. I already like him better than Dory. Um, Dory could be used to buff this guy's defense should you get him. Um, I like him that his ability is fairly powerful and it doesn't uh, take up a defense slot. I think he compares well to some of the other defending cards that are already in the game, such as Defender of Ramus. Uh, he doesn't come into play exhausted, such as the Durndinga Warrior. He does have a cost of three, so he's a little on the expensive side, uh, but he's definitely a good card, particularly because he's in the tactic sphere, and uh, it's good to see these tactics dwarves get a little more love. The next card is the side quest, Delay the Enemy. We must do something to delay the enemy first, Aragorn says from the Fellowship of the Ring. Limit one per deck. It's a side quest that has the battle keyword, meaning you quest with your attack rather than your win, uh, willpower when questing here. And the response is, when the stage is defeated, each player may choose and discard a non-unique enemy engaged with him. So it's a great way uh, to help out decks that have uh, limited combat capabilities. Uh, it is eight quest points, and again, it requires tactics resources to play, it looks like. And it looks like it's a great little way to just, you know, get rid of non-unique enemies, uh, be they Nazgul, what have you. Um, you know, it's a good way to shield decks that are low in defense, low in hit points, low in power. Uh, and a good way to expand upon the idea of side quests. Our next card is a one-cost spirit attachment, the Steed of Imladris. It attaches to either a spirit or Noldor hero, and it is restricted. It's important to note cards that only attach to heroes. It's a easy mistake to make when you're thinking about attaching a card that can only attach to heroes to allies, but this one in particular may only attach to a hero, and out of the heroes it may attach to, only a spirit or Noldor hero. So the response is after attached hero commits to a quest, discard a card from your hand to place two progress tokens on the active location. It combines well with other uh, location clearing cards, and it's an interesting item to perhaps attach to either spirit Glorfindel, spirit 
Um, any of the spirit heroes really uh, would benefit from having this card, but it does have the restricted keyword, meaning that you can only have two restricted items on a character at a time, and if you do place a third, you must choose one of the items to discard. I'm going to have to go fast, as I don't think I have much time left on this battery. Um, the next card we run into is a one-cost spirit event called Fair and Perilous. This features the same box art, uh, same artwork that was featured on the box art. The action is choose a Noldor or Sylvan character. Until the end of the phase, add that character's willpower to their attack. Works well, well on characters who have high willpower and or high attack and are found both within either of the two uh, elven traits, either Noldor or Sylvan. The next card is an Int, a three-cost Int ally, the Welling Hall Preserver. He has three willpower, two attack, two defense, the Int keyword. He cannot have restricted attachments. He enters play exhausted like most other Ents. And his response is after the Welling House, or Welling Hall Preserver uh, readies, heal one damage from an Int character. So he'll be useful for um, keeping the Durndinga Warrior alive, any of the Ents, a lot of the Ents, uh, Treebeard for example, uh, receives bonuses when he takes damage and he can inflict damage on himself, so he's a good way to keep some of the Ent powerhouses alive and in the game. The next card is a one cost lore event called None Return, limit of three copies of None Return in the victory display, and the response is after a non-unique enemy is destroyed, add none return to the victory display to add that enemy to the victory display. I believe this combines with the hero of the last adventure pack, Raziel, in order for her to obtain her buffs. So it's an interesting card where it is a one-cost lore event uh, to send uh, non-unique enemies to the victory display. Our last card is a song, a neutral song, and the song is Hope Rekindled. And the action is reduce the cost of the next event that has a Valor trigger you play this phase by two. And the Valor action is to search the top ten cards of your deck for an event that has a Valor trigger and add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. Valor uh, keywords trigger when your threat is 40 or greater. And it's an interesting use in expanding upon song traits. Um, it's always interesting to include songs in your deck, whether they're adding an additional sphere, or in this case, uh, helping you take full advantage of the Valor keyword. And with that, that is the last of the player cards. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video. I apologize for the hastiness and any stumbles. As always, game on, and I hope you get in lots of gaming this weekend and always.